Hello students, this is part 3 of the lesson Nature of Matter. In part 2, we had learnt about the different states of matter. In this part, we will be starting with the effect of heat on matter. The first activity is, as shown in the picture, fix a metallic ring to a stand so that a bob can just pass through it. So, this is a metallic ring, this is the stand and this is a bob. So, they have fixed the metallic ring to the stand such that this bob can just pass through it. Okay, then take a pendulum of an iron bob and try to pass, to, pass it through the ring. Okay, so first you are passing the bob through the ring. Did the bob pass through the ring? Yes. So, we can see here that the bob is passing through the ring. Next, heat the iron bob and pass it through the ring. Did it pass through the ring? So, you can see here in the second picture that the bob is not passing through the ring. It is getting stuck. So, why did it get stuck? To understand this better, I will show you a video. You can see before heating that it is passing through the ring. Then they are heating it up. Now, if you try to pass it, it will not pass. So, we learned that the bob did not pass, did not pass through the ring. So why did it not pass? It seems that the bob has expanded after heating. Okay, so the bob has expanded after heating. That is why it did not pass. Now, let us move to the next activity. Place an ice cube on a plate for 10 minutes. What did you notice? Is there any change in the ice cube? Right here. So, you can see here that the ice cube is melting. So, the ice cube is melting and the size of the ice cube becomes smaller. The size becomes smaller or it reduces. So these are the observations we can make when we place an ice cube on a plate for 10 minutes. Okay. Next, take a small glass bottle filled with colored water up to half its volume. Then close it with a single hold cork. So what you are going to do is you are going to take a water bottle and then close it. Make a small hole in the cap. Next, insert a thin transparent tube into the bottle. Now what they are doing? They are adding this thin transparent tube into the bottle. Now roll the glass between your palms as shown in the picture. So, they are rolling the glass bottle in your palms as shown. Observe the water level in the tube and write it down. So, you will be able to notice that the water level in the tube rises. So, the water level in this tube, it rises. Okay. The next question is, why? what is the change that has taken place inside the bottle due to rubbing by palms. Why? What has happened inside the bottle due to rubbing of palms? Why is it that the water level is rising? So, it might be because the water is expanding. Okay, so the water is expanding. That is why the water level is rising. Above activity, we understood that matter gets changed when heated. So, matter, it will get changed when it is heated. How does it change? Is that matter expands on heating. So, it increases in size. Hence, solids, liquids and gases, they all expand on heating. So, from the three experiments that we conducted, first, we saw that when the bob is heated, it does not go through the ring, right? And then 
we saw that cooling reduces the size of eyes. Then we saw that rubbing a water bottle with your palms will lead to the rise in water level in the tube. So we discovered that solids, liquids and gases expand on heating. Write what happens when the following objects are heated. I will show you a picture of a candle. So you have already seen this. The candle, it melts when the flame is on. So the candle wax, it melts when the flame is on and it liquefies. You can see that it is flowing down here as a liquid. So the liquid is formed over here and the candle, it is melting and it is flowing down. What happens to a candle when it melts is, it melts when it is heated. Next, so if you keep rice in a cooker and then heat the cooker, what happens to the rice? So we know that the rice gets cooked. When the rice gets cooked, it becomes soft. So the hard rice grains, it would become soft cooked rice. Next, what happens to the water if it is heated? First, it becomes hot water. Correct? And then it becomes boiling water. And finally, it evaporates. So if you keep it for a very long time, you will find out that all of it evaporates and there is no more water left in the container. It is time for a quiz. The question is, what happens to matter on heating? The options are A. Expands or becomes bigger or B. Contracts or becomes smaller. If you need time to think, you can pause the video. The correct answer is matter expands or becomes bigger on heating. So we just learned through our experiments that matters becomes bigger, that is it is expanding on heating. We will look de in, in detail about the change in the state of matter. When an object is heated, there will be a rise in its hotness. Okay, so whenever you are heating something, you are supplying it with heat or hotness. That is why there will be a rise in its hotness. The state of matter changes due to heat. So the state of matter, it changes due to the heat that you are supplying. Okay, write the states of matter in the following situations. Ice cube on heating. So we saw that when you keep an ice cube to room temperature, what is it going to become? It is going to become water. It is going to melt and become water. So ice cube on heating becomes water. So what is going to happen to water on heating? Water on heating becomes water vapor or steam. Okay. Next, what is going to happen to water vapor on cooling? So, whenever you are boiling water, if you have covered it with a plate, when you take out the plate, you can see small droplets of water condensed on it. Okay, so this is nothing but water vapor that is cooled down. So, vapor on cooling becomes water again. And water on refrigerating or cooling becomes ice. So when you freeze water, it becomes ice. So in this picture, we can see this in part by part. First, we have ice. When we supply it with heat, it becomes water. And when we heat water, it becomes steam or water vapor. Changes its state from one form to another due to heat. This is called as change in the state of a substance. So we have saw that there are three states of matter, solid, liquid and gas. Whenever you are heating solid, it becomes liquid. Whenever you are heating liquid, it becomes gas. So on heating, many solids changes into liquid state. Effect of heat on matter depends upon the level of hotness. On increase in the heat, solid changes to liquid and the liquid it changes to gas. 
In the same way, cooling gas changes into liquid and liquid changes into solid. So if you cool gas, it becomes a liquid and if you cool a liquid, it becomes a solid. So you can see this in a systematic manner provided here. First, you have a solid that is ice. Then you're heating it, you're taking it out and you're keeping it in the room temperature. What is going to happen? It is going to melt and become water. Okay. And that water, if you heat it further, if you keep it on the gas and turn on the gas, it is going to boil and become water vapor. Okay. And if you take that water vapor and let it cool down, it is going to become liquid water again. Right. And this liquid water, you can keep it in the fridge and get ice. So that becomes a solid. So they have given an example also like I just said, ice cube on heating becomes water, water on heating becomes vapor, vapor on cooling becomes water and water on cooling becomes ice again. The activity is blacksmith change some metal into required shapes by heating. Why is iron heated? Think and write here. So you can see in the picture that is given that the metal is heated until it becomes red hot. Why does it have to be heated? Why can't they just do it in room temperature? So this is because iron and other metals, they become soft on heating. Okay, so they become soft on heating. This allows the blacksmiths to mold the metal into the shapes that are required to easily beat the metals into the required shapes. I will show you a picture of this. So here you can see that the metal is red hot and then they can easily hammer into it to create the required shape. Next is heat transmits from one object to another. For example, ironing of clothes. So during ironing of clothes, the iron would be heated either by coals or by electricity. And then this heat is transferred to the clothes to remove the wrinkles. Next is write an example for the changes in an object due to heat. I will just give one example that is cooking of food. So we already learned that food becomes cooked when we supply it with heat. You can think of your own examples and then add it to this space here. Next, we will be talking about sublimation. So the experiment is take a few naphthalene balls in an evaporating dish. So these experiments, they are all to be conducted with the help of your teacher. So you have to take naphthalene balls and place it in an evaporating dish. Close the dish with the glass funnel as shown in the picture. So if you can see here in the bottom, the bowl like thing that is the evaporating dish and the cone is the glass funnel. Okay. Take some cotton and close the other end of the funnel. So here they have closed the end of the funnel with some cotton. Heat the dish slowly. So they are heating the dish with the help of the burner. Naphthalene converts to milky vapor and will be collected in the inner side of the funnel. So this naphthalene that was in crystal form, it will be converted to milky vapors and then collected on the inner side of the funnel. Because you have closed the container, it has no space to go outside. That is why it is going to be collected in the funnel itself. Stop heating and observe what happens right here. When you stop heating, what happens is the naphthalene is not converted to the milky vapors anymore. So the naphthalene, it will remain in its solid form. Okay. Let us see why this is happening and what we can learn from this experiment. So we know that when solids are heated, they are first converted into liquid and then into vapor. Okay, and similarly on cooling, the vapors are first converted to liquids and then into solids. But 
some solids on heating directly convert into their vapor state and vice versa without passing through the liquid state. So we know that whenever any solid like ice is heated, it becomes water, which is a liquid. And then whenever water is heated, it becomes a gas that is water vapor. However, there are some solids that directly convert into gas without becoming liquid. Okay, so some solids on heating directly convert into their vapor state and vice versa. Vice versa means the vapor, they also becomes solid on cooling without passing through the liquid state. So this is called as sublimation. So sublimation is the process by which some solids directly convert it to their vapor state and vice versa without passing through the liquid state. So they have given some examples here. Camphor and iodine along with naphthalene camphor and iodine are also examples so camphor is the karpura that we use for puja purposes okay next what happens to naphthalene balls kept in an almera for a few days why so naphthalene balls they are used to keep away cockroaches and other moths okay what if you keep them in the almera for a few days you can see that the naphthalene balls become smaller and smaller and they disappear. This is because they are becoming the vapor state and they are disappearing. For the next activity, you have to light a wax candle and observe what happens to the wax after some time. Now, put off the candle and observe what happens to the melted wax. And right here. So like we saw in this picture, what is going to happen if the candle is on is the wax is going to melt. If you put it off, you can observe that the melted wax, it becomes solid again. Okay. So first on heating or when the flame is on, the candle melts okay then on putting off the flame the wax solidifies again okay the next question is, give examples for the following and take the help of your teacher or parent. So, we have to give an example for this process where the solid that is on heating, it becomes a liquid and the liquid on heating, it becomes a, sorry, the liquid on cooling, it becomes a solid. So, a very simple example for this is ice to water. To ice again. So ice on heating it becomes water and water on cooling or freezing it becomes ice. The next question is give an example for this. So solid it should become directly gas. So we learned that sublimation is the process where solids they become directly gas and the gas vapors on cooling they become solid. So you can give any one of the three examples that is naphthalene, camphor or iodine. I will just give iodine. You can give any one of your examples. So that is the end of part three of the lesson nature of matter. I will see you all in part four.